Uh, we're going to get started tonight. Welcome to Reach Pacific Northwest. Uh, what a blessing to have you here worshiping God with us tonight on a special uh, uh, service. Uh, and so we can all stand in this place. We're just going to begin to wor wor worship uh, our Lord and Savior tonight. So, Father, we are just so grateful and thankful for the blood of Jesus. Father, so thankful for your goodness and your grace. Uh, and we just pray, my God, that you just begin to move, begin to help us uh, Father, we just need you. We need the Holy Spirit. Have your way in this place, my God. And we're asking you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.
Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for your presence, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for moving, Lord God, in this place, Lord. And God, we just pray, Lord God, that you'll continue to move, Lord God, that you'll continue to touch us, Lord God, that we'll continue, Lord God, to surrender our hearts to you, Lord. Father God, we pray, Lord God, every person that's in this place, Lord God, if they're in pain, Lord God, or they're just their minds are not here, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they'll put all their distractions aside, Lord God, and focus on you, Lord. Father God, we pray, Lord God, over Pastor Ron Simpkins, Lord God. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you would just move through him, Lord God, that you will give him the words to speak, Lord God. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that we will have open hearts, Lord God, and we will soak it all in like a sponge, Lord God. And Father God, we continue, Lord God, to pray for Crystal, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, over this tumor, Lord God, that it'll dissolve, Lord God. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you'll surround her, Lord God. Father God, that you'll take away any pain that she feels, Lord God. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for everything you're going to do in this service, Lord God, and in this place, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome out to Reach Pacific Northwest. Feel free to greet one another. Praise God. I want to welcome everyone to Reach Pacific Northwest uh, on an irregular Saturday evening service. Praise God. Well, how many know God is good? Amen. Okay. How many know God is good? Praise God. So we thank you for making it out. We appreciate you making it out tonight. Uh, and uh, I know there's a lot greater things that we could be doing, but nothing greater than being in the house of the Lord, hearing the word of God getting our, our faith stirred, and seeing the power of God at move. So it's going to be an excellent night. Uh, we're not going to take a, we're not going to have the ushers come in or anything, but if you want to give, John's going to give the text to give, put it up there, and uh, you can do that. So uh, we do have one more service tomorrow morning at 1030. I want to tell you, uh, tonight is just going to be the, 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 the little kibbles, the little teasers, and then tomorrow it's, uh, but you know what? Something I've learned about God is when you least expect him to move, he moves. 
all right, and and the and the service that you should have should have been in and you missed is the one where God would have spoken to you, and so uh, it 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 we live in a culture that church is starting to become secondhand. It's just whenever I can make it, I'll make it. I want to tell you, it, it's vital that the people, especially in the days that we live in right now, dude, it is, it is crazy, especially some of the beliefs that churches have today. It's, it is off, it's crazy. So we need to continue to gather together, come together, and allow Jesus to be Lord. Okay, so that, I mean, no, there's, there's something about lordship. Okay, and so we, when we don't honor that, then things begin to break apart in our break apart in our lives. It really does because we need to honor the Lord. That's what church is about. Lord, I'm honoring you. I'm honoring. You. I'm worshiping you. So we are privileged tonight. I remember Ron Simpkins many years ago. I mean, it's uh, we, my wife and I got saved in '88, and uh, and I, we we heard him preach. I can't, I can't remember where the heck we heard him preach at. Uh, but any time that he was around or any time I could, I could hear him, listen to him, we would be there. And then uh, things happened, so we lost connection. But through Pastor Omar and Praise Chapel, we were able to reconnect. And he's actually the one that connected me to Coney Orozco. And because of that, we went to uh, Kenya, we went to Uganda, and we're now helping to uh, send funds over there to help support that work. Uh, he reconnected me with uh, Pastor Mike Mestis. How many are grateful for that? Amen. So uh, how many here you've received a word from Pastor Mike Mestis? Okay, I, almost everyone should have raised their hand in here. And so uh, if you didn't raise your hand, we'll have him back, and he'll point out the ones that didn't raise their hand tonight. <laughs> and so, um, but one thing that I, I mentioned last Sunday is there's two people that I have personally, personally met that have had influence around the world. Okay, the first one was John Maxwell. And uh, he's had, he, I mean, no, he has the most leadership impact than anyone I know around the world. Okay, and the second person, I have a question. I'm gonna, I, I want to start asking my pastor friends. If you could have a mega church of say five or eight thousand people, or have a church of fifty to a hundred people, but influence hundreds of men that touch millions of lives, which one would you choose? And Pastor Ron has influenced more people than I know besides John Maxwell. And that's personally, the that people that I've met. And here's the thing, he doesn't even realize the impact he's making. And so, <laughs> dude, I, he, he doesn't realize the impact and the influence he's had on people's lives. When, when, when he would teach, I would be gleaming as much as I could because there's so much in his words. And so I am so glad. You guys don't even know how honored I feel tonight to be able to have him minister at our church tonight. Out of anybody, and, and trust me, we're, we're, my wife and I are connected. We know a lot of big wigs, but the impact that he's going to bring tonight, I, I, I won't trade it for anything. Because even just hanging out the last, uh, just this is my second day with him, just the fellowships that I've had. I mean, I, I am so stirred. I told, I called one of my friends and said, dude, I am so stirred for Jesus. I don't know what to do right now. I am so excited and pumped up. I'm, he's trying to get me to go to Mawali and, and, and Rwanda. Woo. <laughs> so without further ado, let's welcome Pastor Ron Simpkins as he comes and ministers. <laughs> Wow, to be compared to John Maxwell is pretty powerful stuff. Uh, amen. I'm just excited when I'm compared to Omar Lopez. But, but, I, but I will say this, and I'm saying this for you, not for me. 
I, I have changed a lot of people's lives. I mean, so have you, probably. But I'm here tonight to see some lives change. Is anybody else here that wants something? You need change. Need something to happen. And I just challenge you, listen, and be willing to respond tonight. That's kind of the whole secret of the thing and what can, can bring about uh, transformation in a right in a way. <laughs> Amen. Uh, if you like my style, then Ronald Simpkin, Facebook. I do little three-minute things. So, several of you shaking your head, so I guess a couple of you watch them. And uh, we do them five days a week, and uh, they're a lot of fun. I don't know where they are, but I brought a few of my books. I've written about a dozen books, amen, actually more than that, but I still have about six or seven of them with me, amen, and they're available. And if you really want change and you're kind of blocked, reading can take you to the next level because you can meditate, you can think on it, it can really help you, amen? So there's our, our sales right there, amen. Amen. I've been at this for 50 years next month. Yeah. <laughs> I know I look young, but I'm old. I'm ancient of days. Amen. But so for 50 years, we've been at this. And, and literally this sermon, I've only done this a few times. And it kind of came from asking, how can I help people to change? How can I help people to change? And I really began to pray about it and ask what needs to take place. So this is going to be kind of off of this idea tonight. Amen. And it's simply this. I, th I thought back, I remembered when I was especially a young convert, but it's as true today as it was then, is when generally when I'm at something special, like something like tonight where it's raining and it's Saturday and smart people stay home. Amen. But, but radical, crazy people come out. Amen. And, and listen to God. But, but there's a couple other things. You've got to admit if I say something tonight, I'm going to give you a chance to respond, and it hits you, you've got to admit it hits you. Does that make sense? Just an altar call. But it's getting off your butt and coming forward <laughs> that we're going to have a call. And then the third part of this is getting hands laid on you, that we agree as touching something. Does that kind of make sense? And I'm telling you, as simple as it is, as as easy in some ways, change has happened to me over and over and over again. And so that's kind of what we're shooting for tonight. That's what I put this together for. And, uh, and I have no idea why that's going off. Hallelujah. I thought I'd turned it off. Sorry. And it won't turn off. And I probably just delayed it, and it'll come on in five more minutes. <laughs> the scripture I want to use tonight is Genesis 126, and just even the very first part of it, uh, everybody knows. And God said, let us make man in our image. And so the very first thing I want to talk to you, and we're going to have about five points to this message. Amen. And don't get excited when I do an altar call. It's only the first of a couple. <laughs> Amen. So don't think you're done and it's over. Uh, but. How's your image? Look at the person next to you and say, how's your image? Amen. There's something that happened. Adam messed up the image of man. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they ruined the image. But Jesus died, what? To give us back the image of God. But here's the kicker. You've got to put it on. You've got to put off, amen, the bad stuff and put on the good stuff. Amen. And this is the challenge here tonight. So the first thought is simply this, what I do, others do. Did you catch that? What I do, others do. Tell the person next to you, what I do, others do. What I do, others do. I mean, it's such a simple thought, but this is why I'm here. This is what the whole purpose of my life is ever since I've gotten saved. It's why I go to church. Amen. It's not that I, I need it. I need church. But what I found is if I don't go to church, nobody goes to church. Amen. When I got saved, I went to church the next day, and Joe Weidinger got saved. Now, you don't know Joe, I don't think, but he's one of the most powerful men I know on earth. He's changed the world. Amen. He mentioned Coney Orozco because I got saved, 
and I started going to church, Tony Orozco got saved, and he started to go to church. You catch the idea. What you do, others do. If you pray, others will pray. Amen. If, if you serve, then servanthood can begin to become a pattern. This is probably the most important key to a church exploding or growing is that we just simply do the things that we should do. That kind of makes sense? Uh, Ron Jones was my pastor. I guess Dave Jones has a church of 1,000 today in Colorado Springs. Hundreds of churches have been started. And when I came in, me and Joe came, sat in the back at a service. Amen. He only told me years later, he told God, if that guy doesn't come back, I'm going to quit the ministry. So if I'd have never, I don't know, but, if, but it sounds like it. If I had never come back, he would have probably quit the ministry. And thousands of people wouldn't be tough. You'll never know the impact of your life until you do something. Amen? And so here, here's a wild story. When I got married, we had what we called Jesus people weddings back then. Amen? You got married right in the middle of church. Amen? You invited all your friends, and they preached a sermon and had an altar call, and it was, it was great. I didn't even know. This friend of mine, Ike Elliott, was there. He was in the back. Amen? And when, when he saw me, we're just worshiping, and I raise my hand. Now, that's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? I mean, I just raise my hand. And uh, when he saw me raise my hands, he was so shaken by that that the next Sunday, he went to the closest church to his house, sat on the porch until the pastor showed up, got saved. But here's the crazy thing. He, he, he ran a church camp for kids a Christian camp for the rest of his life. Thousands of people were changed because what I do, others do. They're make, making sense. Amen? And so there's something here that's so basic, amen, that, that if we're not, we can get in trouble. So here's the first altar call. How many here need to get louder? Amen? I'm serious. Raise your hand if you say, I need to get louder. You need to turn the volume up on your life. Come on, raise your hand. Don't be a rebel. Okay, there are some of you. There's some others that are not obeying. My next point, shut up and obey. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again, let's pray. I'm serious. Simply raise the volume. Amen. Go to church more. I mean, I'm not. it's not a works thing. I'm not telling you. But if you want a life that will influence others, then you just need to get louder. Amen. Once again, how many say, that's me. I'm going to get louder. Amen. You may need to stop tonight and witness to somebody at a gas station. You need to do something. Amen. need to come to prayer and just pray more. You'll never know the impact until you do it. Father, we just release the Holy Spirit. Father, we release our obedience. God, we repent for being rebels, for not, not obeying, for not telling our friends, our family, God. We repent for, for not worshiping, God. We repent for not in public, just simply doing simple things, but that can affect others, and we surrender in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I got an email the other day from a kid. I was a school teacher before I became a preacher. And I would put my Bible, you couldn't do hardly anything else. You couldn't witness to the kids or do anything like that. You'd go to prison. But, but I would put my Bible on the desk. That was, that was my witness. I, I taught some other stuff at night so I could witness. But basically, this kid wrote me back. He said, I remember you were my teacher in seventh grade, and you always had your Bible on your desk. He said, I'm saved. I'm a preacher today, and I'm living for God. And I don't know, if I hadn't had the Bible there, would he have gotten saved? I don't know. If I hadn't witnessed it, God come out to church, would Joe Whitinger come? I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to find out. Amen? Number two, sanctify. Look at the person next to you and say, sanctify. Amen. It's a big word, but it's a simple word. Amen. Tony Orozco, I mentioned him before. He was one of my oldest friends. I'll never forget he came. He was the first prophetic word I got from a friend, from someone I knew. And he, he came, and uh, we actually met in Prescott. 
at, at a park outreach. He said, God told me to tell you, sanctify your intellect. I knew immediately what he was saying. I have a master's degree. Amen. I, I was a teacher. Amen. So what, one of the things that I, I'm, is it bad to say I'm smart? Amen. It doesn't show, but I am. I got the fruit paperwork to prove it. Amen. And, and sanctify just means to set apart, to cleanse. Listen to this. I was reading today, and, and it hit me, Second, uh, 1 Timothy 2.20, Message Bible. In a well-furnished kitchen, there are not only crystal goblets and silver platters, but waste cans and compost buckets. <laughs> that's, that's pretty graphic, isn't it? You, you can have, you ever, you ever when we were a kid, we still, they had outhouses at my grandpa's. And so you had this jar that you would uh, do your business in. Amen. Is that you? Is that the life we live, that we're just a container for trash? Or are we purified? And we're something that's used to eat off of and drink off of. Literally, it's that simple. It's not a works thing. God wants us to live clean because it's good for us. It's good for our wife. It's good for our kids, our family, for our world. Amen. So how's your sanctification going? Amen. I think a key to, to life, of a, the life of God, is to give your all to God. Give everything you have to God. Amen. And to the purpose of life is to have God use you. God wants to use you. If God wants to use the person next to you, punch him in the side real quick. Amen. Yeah, that's good. That was a good one. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm telling you, sometimes that's, that, that's all it takes for someone to be changed and for transformation to happen. Romans 12, 1 and 2 simply says to us, take your life and give it to God. Take your mind and give it to God. Amen. The key to the Christian life is really we need to surrender. The hassle in almost every war, I was a history teacher before I came over, is the problem with most wars is the, the, when, they, when they surrender, they don't surrender. They're just giving up. Then they're going to make some more weapons, and they're going to go back to war. That's the problem with most Christians. You get desperate, you, you come to an altar, you pray a prayer, but you don't mean it. Amen? Woo, getting tense in here. It's warming up a lot. Like I said, I don't have any, have any because I sold them all, but I'm mainly known for T-shirts, shut up and obey. Shut up and worship. And you get the idea. Shut up and pray. I was an evangelist going around preaching everywhere, and the biggest problem is nobody would shut up and obey. You know, you pray with people. And they give you excuses why they can't live clean, why they've got to sleep around, why they can't quit drinking. All these things, shut up and obey. Look at the person next to you and tell them, shut up and obey. Shut up and... <laughs> Some of you can't do it, can you? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a revival going on in Kentucky that the uh, first of the year at a seminary there, and it affected tens of thousands of people. And, and yet, you know, these were, these were Bible college students. These weren't crack addicts. This wasn't a prison cell. And yet, when they came, and it was just simply on a, on a, on a morning, they just began to repent. They began to admit that they had problems, and as they confessed them, literally, it swept across America and then the world. In Praise Chapel, I wrote the history of Praise Chapel, and one of the main stories Mike Neville told me is the turning point of Praise Chapel was, was when Jed Smock came, he preached a revival, he set the microphone up, don't worry, I'm not going to do it tonight, I can't promise your pastor wouldn't, but I won't, but he set the microphone up and had people come up and confess their sin. Woo, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? I mean, and people did it. Yeah, a lot of them never came back to church because they were so embarrassed today, but he said that was when revival started in the Maywood Church and begin to happen is when people confess their sin. Second altar call. Are you ready? Now you have to respond quickly. How many of you have something in your life that you know you need to quit? You'd raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Look at this. A lot of us do. And this is, this is a block. 
This is a major problem. It's not even evil stuff. It's just stuff that gets in the way of our obedience and all that God would have us to do. Amen. And so if when you start to deal with your stuff, God can move. Amen. So anybody that raised their hand, pray with me right now. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We give you, we surrender our life. We surrender our hearts and our purpose to you. Father, sanctify us. Cleanse us. Make us a temple. Make us, God, a holy vessel unto you. Let us become light and salt in a world that's full of darkness. Because, God, you're using us and helping us to help others. Amen. So has this made sense tonight? Has it helped anybody? Wave at me if it's helped you at all tonight. I mean, literally, these are so simple, but they can literally transform your thing. Number three, when you don't know what to do, serve. Amen? When you don't know what to do, serve. I don't want to be a servant. Can I be honest? I want to be Billy Graham. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to be a superstar. You know what I mean? I, want, I, went to, I went to Indonesia, and they were killing Christians. And I went there to preach a conference, and this pastor friend had asked me to come. And I asked him, what do you want me to talk about? He said, suffering. Ha! I was kind of offended. I didn't, I didn't want somebody in Indonesia who's dealing with persecution to say, who can I bring in that knows how to suffer? You know, Ron Simpkins does. I wanted to be the prosperity guy. You know, I got my third jet plane. I, but, but, but I have to admit to you, it hit me. At least I'm known for something. Amen. And, and it was powerful. It was powerful. Hallelujah. It says in Matthew 23, 11, the greatest among you will be what? Your servant. Your servant. I remember getting a word from a good friend, and, and it was, the, you're going to be the servant, the door servant in the house of God. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be standing at the door. I want to be sitting at the table. Is anybody else as carnal as I am? Can you believe <laughs> pastor invited me? But I could tell you 20 stories tonight of almost every breakthrough moment of my life has been tied to servanthood. And when I say that, maybe some of you are here tonight, and you come to a point to where you question, am I getting anything out of this? I, I'm making all these sacrifices in my Christian life, amen, and it doesn't seem like it's paying. Yeah, it's called dying. <laughs> Die to self. Eddie Vargas always tells a story when he went out to preach. I came up to him with a big smile and said, you're going to die. You're going to die. Amen. And it, it, was, I was, it was 1990. It was a crisis time in my life. My church was falling apart. My marriage was falling apart. I was desperate to hear from God. I'd actually got a cabin in the mountains there in Colorado and was fasting and reading through the Bible. And I got to Philippians 4, I'm pretty sure it is, where it says rejoice. And I knew Paul's in prison. And I took my Bible and threw it in the dirt. I was so mad that I, this is a bunch of hooey. I think I may have used stronger language than that. But I mean, I was so upset. And I just stomped off. And I was done. I was done. And then I heard the still small voice of God, and he asked me, when were you happiest? <laughs> and I knew that moment was when I first got saved. I went to a little church. There was nothing in it. There was nothing in it for us. Amen. But I began to serve, and my life turned around. Amen. Maybe a couple of you here tonight are in crisis. And I, I can tell you this, you just may need to serve. Amen? Hallelujah. Is God speaking to anyone? Raise your hand if God's speaking to you. This is a lot of hands. And it's the biblical pattern, and everything kind of comes from that. Amen. 
How many want to know how you could change the world? Anybody? Okay, a couple of you. You can tell I like you to lift your hand. Make this guy a success. Serve, serve, David. Amen. Hey, does that make sense? In fact, anybody, you kind of hear God when I say that. You know that's what you need to do. Just make this couple even a success. You just raise your hand. You say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There's just a handful of people. It's the turning point of a life. It's the beginning of what can bring great fruitfulness into your life and change other people's lives. God's looking for servants. And then number four is everything is about hearing God. Amen? You may have to bring a chair up. I may have to sit down. My knees are going. Pray for me. In a couple months, I get them replaced. I'm going to become bionic Ron. I don't want to fall down. <laughs> Amen. So, Larry Neville asked me, he asked me, uh, what's God saying to you? And, and honestly, I told him, I don't really listen to God that much. What if my pastor told me something that God didn't? I mean, we were, we were in a group that was out of balance. But the changing point of most Christians' life is when they start to hear God. That, he talks in all kinds of ways. He talks through worship. He talks through circumstances. He talks through the Bible, through the sermons that are here. But here's the hassle. Most Christians aren't really listening. They're not expecting. They're just, uh, they're just going through time. They're, they're involved in rituals, duties, and these kinds of things. They think it's all about, but God can even use <laughs> ritual and and all these kinds of stuff, but we've got to hear God. Does that make sense? Amen. And he's speaking. He's speaking louder than he ever has. And he's involved, but many people just aren't really listening. Amen. So we're the priesthood of the believer. That was in 1530. I think it was Luther rocked the world with the Protestant Reformation. And one of the fundamental things was is the, the reason we have every major university in America was started, Yale, Stanford, because they wanted kids to be able to read their Bibles and hear from God. This, this is the fact. And so there's several things. One is we're not listening. Some of you just need to stop and start to listen more. Some, sometimes you're already here. Why not listen a little, a little harder? Am I making sense? Expect God to speak with you. Amen. Make friends with somebody that really hears from God. I, I think that two things that really get us in trouble is that we, we allow. That's why I talked about that. Sanctify yourself. Sin keeps you from hearing. We could, we could read a dozen scriptures easily, amen, about how that the reason that we can't hear is because we let sin into our life and it blocks our hearing. Does that make sense? And so if you start to deal with this, we, we get wounded. Anybody ever been hurt or wounded? I had a friend, me and Lynn Litton were driving through, through the mountains of Colorado, and I was telling him, I was telling him what a great guy he is, how he was like a, just such an inspiration to me that, that he, I, I probably trusted him more than anybody. And I look over, and I see he's kind of just staring into the distance. And I said, what are you doing? What, what's going on? He said, Ron, you know, I'm just wishing that somebody would, would tell me that my life is important. I slammed the brakes on. I stuck my finger in his face. I told him, listen. I probably even said something like, you idiot. But I repent today. He's in heaven. <laughs> But the, literally, this is what happened. I said, I appreciate you. You're one of the greatest men I know alive. You've helped me more than anybody. The next morning, he, he, he got up. We went out to breakfast. And he told me, he said, Ron, you're not going to believe this. But he was in Vietnam. He was in a tank that was blown up. 
He was almost killed in that. And every night for over 20 years, every night since Vietnam, he woke up and he was in a tank that was burning and there was no ammunition. He never slept more than three and a half hours a night. And, and he said, last night, <laughs> oh, thank you. He said, last night was the first time, and it might have even been 30 years, he said that I slept through the whole night. I hope I didn't do that. Amen. How many know the devil's real? Amen. So is his wife. Amen. <laughs> uh, we need to... We need to hear. I think one of the turning points in my life, I'm a pretty good guy. I really am. Honestly, ask my mom. He can't see Pastor. She would tell you. Amen. And yet, I had it was the third church I was pastoring. I was working with Jack Harris. We were we were out kind of just revelating and talking. I'll never forget it. And and, uh, and I was kind of complaining about me. Does anybody else ever complain about you? Saying, saying ne negative things about Ron. And uh, I'll never get Jack looks at me, and he points his finger at me. He says, I want you to shut up. That's probably where I got the shut up and obey from. He said, I want you to shut up. I don't want you to talk bad about my friend Ron Simpkins. <laughs> well, that kind of caught my attention. And then I'll never forget, he looked at me and he said, you're one of the most spiritual men I know. I trust you like very few people I've ever known in my life. It changed my life. I was saved. I was pastoring. But I'd never heard the real liberating power of the gospel. Does anybody kind of sense something going on in you when I say that, even? That we, that we, we come out of brokenness and abuse, and we just don't hear what other Christians, a lot of times we just don't say enough, amen, of nice things to each other. In Praise Chapel, it's horrible, and the fellowship was worse, amen, that you just cap and mock and make fun, your mom addresses you funny, and, and never, never be positive. In fact, here, stand up, everybody stand up. Amen, yeah. We want to activate something tonight. I want you, I'm going to pray a prayer, and then I want you to let the Lord, I want you to go to one or two people and tell them how much you love them, if nothing else. Speak a word of encouragement, amen, into their life. This is what church is about. It's, it's, it's about us in a activating something powerful. Does it make sense? Amen. Now, if you don't do it, amen, we're not going to throw you out. But you'll never get changed until you change. Let's pray. Father, we release the Holy Spirit tonight in this room. God, to encourage us. Help us to encourage each other. Help us, God, to be used by you to speak a word of comfort into someone else's life. Now just look around and go to someone. Give them a hug. Amen. Say something encouraging. Come on. Come on. Get up. Move it. Let's go. This is... So important. I've seen people from doing this called to preach, lives changed. You guys are having your life. Thank you. Well, then have me back. Oh, okay, good. Good. I believe you. Yeah, give somebody a hug. Come on. Take a moment.
I'm trying to be this is one I preach once in a while. Amen. Okay, you can kind of take your seats. Amen. We're about there. Amen. But so what, what we kind of just did in kind of a secret way, this is secret, is to literally activating the spiritual nature inside of you. You have a body, but you are a spirit. When you got saved, you got the Holy Spirit. And yet the, the vast majority, I, and I, I shouldn't probably say the vast majority, but I think most Christians I meet never really understand what's at work inside of them and the Spirit of God. They don't understand how important it is that we do some of the things that we're doing here, just encouraging and speaking. I think it becomes prophecy. In, in 1 Corinthians 14, it says prophecy is edification, exhortation, and comfort. But what most of you did probably is you just went up to somebody and, and said something kind, something comforting, something encouraging. I, how, many, how many would take a challenge this week? Anybody, you need a challenge. Okay, I, I, I want you to try with all your heart to get somebody to cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Omar Lopez. I, I travel a lot with Omar all over the world and the country. And you watch next time he come here. Everybody he prays for, he gives a word to, they just start bawling. Some of you have done that. You just start, God, you know, because he's telling you God cares about you. And somehow we've never heard that before, that we don't get it, you know, in, in the normal deal. And so I, I challenge you, just for even for fun, this when you go to work this week, Look for the person that you hate the most. And I call it even spiritual lying. Amen. To a degree, you need to lie more. The hassle with some of you is you function from your emotions. You do what you feel. Well, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Well, it's about time you become one if you ever want to go to heaven. Amen. Because what you feel and sense are flesh, not spirit. And you'll only get in the spirit when you surrender to the promises of the Word of God. How I many you know what I'm talking about? I couldn't get saved for a long time because I wouldn't believe. It was a friend of mine that looked at me, and it's a crazy story. I have all these crazy stories. But I actually led him to the Lord when I was a drunk. Amen. It didn't work for me, but, but I'd been raised in church. And he came back to try to get me saved. Amen. Yeah, no, and he's witnessing to me, and I'm mocking him even. It was horrible in some ways. But God broke in. Has anybody had God break in? He just broke in and said in a little America, 1973. And he said to me, you're a liar. I said, what? I'm not a liar. He said, yes, you are. Jesus Christ died for your sins, and you aren't a big enough sinner to stop his grace from forgiving you. And I saw it. I saw I needed a Savior. I saw that I needed. And that night, my life changed. But I had to begin to say what God said, not what I felt. Because I'd backslid. I'd been saved a hundred times. God, yeah, the worst thing I ever did was take acid and go to a revival. I'm serious. They preached on hell. I felt the flames. I, I ran to the altar. Forgive me. Forgive me. But it didn't take because I never, I never activated what God did. I tell, some of you are so close to becoming spiritual breakthrough people. Amen. Because I can guarantee you it's just this simple. We're God's children. We, we should know and feel the presence of God in a way that we can say, Dada, Abba. Amen. And yet, why don't we feel that? Because we're functioning from our flesh. Amen. And not from the Spirit. So you've got to activate your spiritual side. Am I making sense? And, and let me give you this as a freebie. We're probably not going to pray for it tonight. Let's just, I get hammered. Amen. But if you don't speak in tongues, you need to speak in tongues. 
because how you build yourself up, Jude says, is praying in the Spirit. So there's some of you, you need to learn how to build yourself up. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Good preaching, Ron. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so there's something here that changes everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you tonight. We're hungry. We're hungry, God. We're hungry for you. We're here, God, because we need you. And we need God to activate our spiritual nature. We need God to to be transformed. And God, we're going to receive. We're going to open ourselves to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. So listen, I want to pray for, for anybody that wants prayer here in just a minute. And I'm real quick. We'll be out of here before too long. I'm hoping I can con Pastor into taking me to eat something. Amen. You can tell I got to feed the monster every <laughs> once in a while. But hear this. This is what God really is telling me and why I'm even saying this. It is so easy to know and hear God. It is so easy. Uh, we know people, uh, 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 Billy Hall, seven life sentences to Folsom Prison. Amen. He was a monster. Amen. And in one night, he changed. In one night, when I said I was a little America, I surrendered to God. In one night, I went from a drug addict and an alcoholic to a child of God. And the next day, I was a different human being. You say, why? I just begin to believe. It's that easy. It's that close. Some of you need to raise your believer. <laughs> Amen. You need to turn it on. You say, how will I do it? Well, just start doing what the Bible says instead of what your emotions say or your friends say or your past says. And it can take some work. It's not always easy. It takes some discipline. You may have to go through a season of time, but I've seen hardly anybody that can't, amen, their whole life begin to change direction. Amen. And I, I know enough, I've talked to your pastor enough, this is a great place. How many agree with me? This is a great place. The fact that you can have all of you out in the rain on a Saturday night is proof this is a cult. There's no doubt about it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so obvious. Amen. But it's a good cult. Amen. We're, we're, we're hungry. We're, we're seeking God. And I want to tell you, God is really wanting you to find Him and what He promises. Does that make sense? So, what's, what's, what's it hurt? Tonight, I'm willing, and your pastor and his wife, we, all of us, we're, we're more than willing to pray for you. But here's what we're going to ask. How many even have a hint that God wants to take you to a higher level? Here's what my ministry, I believe, is. Raise the level of the Holy Spirit. Does anybody here need to raise the level of the Holy Spirit in your life? Amen. It's easy and it's hard. It's easy in that it's already done for you. The promises are there in your life. But you do have to walk it out. You've got to walk it out. And here's, and here's the biggest problem. We almost need to almost preach a whole other sermon on it. But I wish getting saved was like getting high. I love to get high. Did anybody else love to get high? Nobody. Wow, this is a great church, buddy. Nobody. But I was a sinner, man. I was a sinner. and uh, But, you know, you did have to smoke something to get high. You had to do something. Well, it's the same with the Christian life. You've got to begin to do something. And so it can be as simple as just, just getting louder in your worship. Amen. It can be just beginning to raise your hands if you've never done it before. It can be testifying, going and, and telling somebody about what Christ has done in your life. 
I've seen literally an instantaneous change when somebody witnessed to somebody. They'd never done it before. It's just raising the level of the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? And if you're willing, I'm willing to pray with you and believe with you. But I have to say, it, it may not happen right here. It may be that you'll need to take this week and come to prayer on Monday night. Come to Wednesday night and start to ask God. Start to, start to push towards this transformation. And I'm telling you, it won't take long. It'll happen. I mean, no, I, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. And it won't even just be you. It'll affect all kinds of other people. That's the astounding thing about this. Literally, I could name all kinds of people that because I got saved, they got saved. What you do, others do. So we made sense tonight. Everybody stand to your feet. Worship team can come if they want to lead the worship. If you would like prayer, I want you just to come up. I want you just to come up and stand here in the front. Amen? If nobody comes, that's all right too. But if you want prayer, and what we're mainly praying for tonight is and anything you want, you, you can even lean over and tell me if there's something you want prayer for. But I'm going to pray especially that there would be a raising of the level of the Holy Spirit in your life. And so part of this is going to be as you come, expect God to speak to you. He's already spoke to you or you wouldn't be up here. The very fact that you've come is exactly what I'm talking about. You have already asked God to do something, and you have felt enough of God that you've responded. So all we need to do now is when I come along, as I pray for you and lay my hands on you, I just want you to the best of your ability receive. Just begin to worship God. Begin to thank Him for what He's doing in your life. Does that make sense? And it's just that simple. Amen? So let's all take hands with the person next to you and let's pray together. Father, pray this out loud with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you, change me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive. I surrender. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now just begin to worship God, all you here. And I'm just going to come along and I'm going to pray for all of you. Triumphs over judgment Love wider than horizons Stronger than all sin Lord, your kindness Leads us to Jesus, I surrender.
Worshiping God, it's not done yet. Keep going.
know, maybe you're new to this, to this type of church, the people getting slain in the spirit, the prophecy, the... I want to tell you, if you read the book of Acts, this is exactly what they did. And when you begin to realize God moves, when God moves, you could feel his presence. People start getting touched. And you can go to church. You can go to any church in the world. You can go to church. But I want to tell you, if the spirit of God's not there, then you're just going to church. There's no change. Books of Acts change people's lives. When they begin to speak in tongues, that was the evidence of the Holy Spirit. They changed. When Jesus breathed at them, they, 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 people were falling. It, 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 it's the power of God. And what he spoke to dude, it, it sounds so fundamental and so, and so simple, and yet it, it touched hearts. That's the power of the gospel. What he said tonight, I, I, I speak to anywhere between 40 and 70 people every other Monday at work. And in there I throw in value. I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I can't preach the gospel, but I show value and start showing them. I'm like, you know what? We appreciate that you chose our job. This hospital, when people are running away, you chose to come in. And we value you. And you know what? You can make a difference in someone's life by just adding value to them. And you see people, like he said, people start crying. I'm, I'm, blowing, I'm standing, I'm watching, and I'm like, oh, my God. Can you imagine if I could preach the gospel here? You know? And, and but how many know people that you speak to every day, some are on the verge of committing suicide, and you have the hope to speak into their lives. That's what we're called to do to encourage one another. I want to tell you, suicide right now, number two killer in the world. Number two. It's moved up. Number two. You have the hope. You have the hope by just speaking a word of encouragement to someone else. Their whole life can change. Praise God. How many, how many were touched today? I was, I was intense, man. I'm telling you, I was... I, you can't get any more real than that. <laughs> you can't get any more real than that. That's what the gospel is about. Reality. It's real. It's real. It touches you right here. If it doesn't touch you there, then you heard something else other than the gospel. I, 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 you, you know what? There's great motivator speakers out there who will pump you up. And then you wake up in the, tomorrow morning and say, why do I feel like this? You don't even know why, what happened, okay? But the gospel, you wake up tomorrow morning and you know why. You know why. And that's what's going to happen to some of you. And I hate preaching after the preacher, but that, that, I want to tell you, that was awesome, man. I got touched, so praise God. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, close it down. We, there is fellowship. There's going to be food that, back there. Uh, the littles uh, labored and uh, made some food and uh, they're baking it back there so it's going to be good. So Father we are just so honored and thankful God for the Holy Spirit that's in this place and touched lives tonight, changed lives, transformed lives tonight. Father we're thankful my Lord that we are part of these, this revival God that you are my God beginning to start here in the United States. And Father, we are claiming, God, our region. We are claiming this area, God. We claim it in the name of Jesus. We know you're going to do a powerful work through this church, Lord. We are believing you, my God, that we are going to be the birth of something powerful that happens in this region. And Father, tonight we just honor you, worship you, glorify the name of Jesus. And we pray that you will bless the food, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you guys for coming out on a rainy Saturday evening. Everybody feel free to be dismissed.